Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, I recently did an unboxing video of the Galaxy S10 Plus with one terabyte of internal storage and because it's the one terabyte version, it comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM. And today I want to ask ourselves a question. Let's say you've gone and bought this device. What does that extra RAM and that copious amount of storage do for you? What can you do with this device? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so obviously the device can do everything that other variants in the range can do. It can play the same games, it can take the same photos, you can watch the same movies on it. So there's nothing special about it in terms of its overall capabilities. So I'm not going to be looking at those things because it's the same as the other S10 devices. However, I do want to look at what does that 12 gigabytes of RAM mean and what does that one terabyte of storage mean? So let's start with the RAM. So if you follow my videos here on Gary Explains or over on the Android Authority uh, channel, you will know that I did a video about how much RAM does your phone need in 2019. Now I won't go into all the details now, I'll leave links in the description below if you wanna follow up on any of that stuff. But basically I said four gigabytes is usable and between six and gigabytes is a sweet spot and anything over eight gigabytes is basically a waste of time. Now we have here the 12 gigabyte version of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and the question is, is it a waste of time? Well, I did some testing, so let's see what I found out. So in the testing, what I did was basically, I started an app, I saw how much available memory there is left on the device, I saw how much ZRAM swap space is being used, then I launched another app, and then I launched another app, and I kept on going until finally Android killed off an app because there was just too much stuff in RAM. And here's a graph of what I found out. So what you'll see here on the horizontal axis is the name of the apps and the games that I'm launching as I go along. Along the vertical axis is the amount of available RAM. And then the orangey red line actually plots that amount of available RAM and the yellow line plots the amount of ZRAM swapping that's being used. And you can see that at the beginning you start with about 8.5 gigabytes of available memory. The first thing I then did, of course, this is from a reboot, is then launched uh, an app called RAM Truth, which is very good at telling you how much RAM is being used. And then I launched the app uh, Smash Hit, which is a casual kind of game. And then I decided to launch a, a, a big app, and that is, of course, Asphalt 9. So when Asphalt 9 was launched, you can see straight away the memory usage went down to uh, seven gigabytes there, and that is quite a clear indication of the amount of RAM it uses. And then I slowly go along further, the Play Store, the game stack, 2048 the game, Temple Run 2, and then a couple of big ones then in succession, that's real racing and need for speed and uh, no limits. And here again, you can see the memory really does start to go down and we're starting to go below the five gigabytes of available memory. Then next we have Color Bump and then Subway Surfer and then Rise Up. Now at this point, the swapping is starting to be used. So while the available memory has come down now to around about four gigabytes, at this point, some of the uh, ZRAM is starting to be used to free up memory for apps that are, are being loaded. And then we have Termux, and then we have PUBG. And of course, PUBG is a big game. It uses 516 megabytes of RAM and forces another 301 megabytes of swapping to occur. And then after that, I launched Waze, and then of course, Fortnite, another big uh, resource-hungry uh, app gets launched. So you can see the available memory comes down, the amount of swapping goes up. And remember, all these things we've launched, so Asphalt 9 and Temple Run 2 and Real Racing and Need for Speed No Limits and PUBG and Fortnite are now all still concurrently in RAM. They're not running, because that's now how Android works, but they are still all in RAM. I then launched the Microsoft Office app, I then launched Google Photos, and you can just see that the amount of RAM here is kind of decreasing. There was a bit of an up spike there when I launched Chrome, then I launched the game Happy Glass, and then finally at the end I launched Drumpad, and at that point the Android out of memory killer kicked in and it actually kicked out Smash Hit from memory. 
So as you can see, there are about 20 apps there that are all running, including five that are huge memory hogs. So we've got Fortnite and PUBG and Need for Speed No Limits, and we've got Real Racing and so on, Asphalt 9, and they're all running there, and they're all resident in memory, okay? And then finally, when I run that last app, the out of memory killer says I need some more space, and it decides to kill off an old app. So all the extra 12 gigabytes gives you is not faster gaming or not a better in-game experience. What it allows you to do is have more big apps running at the same time now of course the question is how many people want to switch seamlessly between PUBG and Fortnite and Need for Speed and Real Racing and Asphalt 9 and between their Gmail and between Twitter and between Snapchat and between basically a normal kind of user would be happy to switch between smaller apps and then if you've got let's say Fortnite and PUBG both running in memory at the same time that's a pretty a good thing because the argument is that if you go to 16 gigabytes you could say well okay I've got seven big apps running in memory at once or I've got eight big apps running okay let's go to 20 gigabytes and of course this has no end because memory is always going to be a finite resource and as I said there's more details about how all that works in the videos that I'm linking in the description below. And then of course there is one terabyte of storage. What does that give you? Well, when you come to talk about storage, there are two major things to talk about. One of course is the capacity. In this case, we're talking one terabyte. And another is the speed. How quickly do things get data, get written to and read from the internal storage? Now, some people noticed when I showed the unboxing video, I showed a clip that showed the storage uh, page inside of the Android settings. And there it showed that over 88 gigabytes of space has been used on the device already. And they're saying, how can you use 88 gigabytes of space on a brand new device that you just got out of the box? Well, actually, it's not quite like that. So let me try to explain what the problem is there. So it said that there are 88.7 gigabytes used of 1024 gigabytes, which when you do the maths means there's 935 uh, gigabytes free. But of course, the first question is, how much is a gigabyte? Is a gigabyte 1,000 to the power of three or 1,024 to the power of three. Now I've got a whole video about this as well as the difference between bytes and bits per second when it comes to measuring speed, which again I'll link to in the description below. But technically a gigabyte is 1,000 to the power of three and a gigabyte is 1024 to the power of three. Now it's clear that because of that, of that screenshot there, it shows that then they think one terabyte is 1024 gigabytes, not 1000 gigabytes, it thinks it's 1024 gigabytes. So already here, there's a disparity of 24 gigabytes when we start to wonder which actually system are they using? Is it the, you know, gigabytes or gigabytes? Which way around is it? And the actual amount of free space that you have on the S10 Plus is 982 million bytes, which of course, if you are dividing just in base 10, that is 982 gigabytes. If you think a gigabyte is based on 1024, so powers of two, then that becomes 937 gigabytes. And that's where their mathematics are starting to go. They're saying 1024 minus 937 is, well, it's 86 point something or other, but actually by the time you do add some pre-installed apps, then you do actually go over 88 gigabytes. Of course, my, what I'm really saying is that the sum should be 1000 minus 989 gigabytes and that gives you around 17 gigabytes of space used plus some space for the free apps and of course there are different partitions that you know have been divided up there in the main memory for booting and so on so that is a much more reasonable number so it comes down to the difference between you know whether you think a terabyte is a thousand uh, gigabytes or 1024 gigabytes and we've all had this is a common problem we've all had this when we buy a hard drive and we think it says one terabyte and then when we put it into our pc it's actually we find it's 900 and, and something or other gigabytes we say hey where did my extra 50 60 70 80 gigabytes go and I, as i say i deal with that in a video that you know, i link to in the description below now talking of the size you know how much can you store on one terabyte on your phone and this is a really interesting question so I did a quick bit of maths and this is what I kind of looked at 
If we assume that one photo that you take actually on the S10 uses five megabytes of storage, if we assume that one minute of video recorded again on the device takes 100 megabytes, if we assume that one minute of music takes around three megabytes, and one hour of high quality Netflix downloads takes 1,000 megabytes, then the one terabyte S10 has enough space for 40,000 photos, 33 hours of recorded footage that you recorded yourself on the phone, six weeks of non-stop 24 by seven music, and 200 hours of Netflix downloads in their highest quality mode, and you'll still have more free space than there is on the 128 gigabyte model of the S10 Plus. Now obviously that's an awful lot of data, 200 hours of video, non-stop music for six weeks, 40,000 photos and so on. Now the real question is, do you actually ever store that amount on your phone? Yes, people do download Netflix videos for watching on planes and trains and so on, or when they want to have it offline. Yes, people do have music of course on their devices. Yes, we all take videos. Yes, we all take photos, but do you need that much? You know, actually would you, have enough with just 512 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes. So, you know, that is an amazing amount of storage that you can get just on one phone. And the other question is how fast is the storage? All very well if you've got this huge chunk of storage, but actually if writing to it is really, really slow or reading from it is really, really slow, what's it like? Well, there are some programs that measure the kind of speeds for reading and writing. Now, there are a couple of things we need to know about flash memory. The first thing is that writing is much slower than reading. That's just the nature of flash memory itself. And also reading a big contiguous block of something, a sequential block of data, is very different to reading lots and lots of little files from all over the internal storage. So generally when we do storage tests for speed, we divide them into four categories. Sequential read, sequential write, so that's reading big blocks of data. And then random read, so lots of little things all over the place, and random write, writing little things all over the place. And I did some testing using a tool that's available on the uh, Google Play Store, I'll leave a link to it in the description below, that actually uh, allows you to do these sequential writes and these random writes. And I compared the S10 Plus to the OnePlus 6T and to the new Huawei P30 Pro. And this is what I found out. So if you look here at the sequential write speed, you'll see here the Galaxy S10 Plus is the fastest of those three devices at 189 uh, megabytes a second. All these numbers are in megabytes a second. However, from there, things do start to go down a hill a bit. For sequential read, for example, the OnePlus 6T is the fastest of all of the devices. And then for random writes, we can see here quite amazingly, the, uh, the P30 Pro is way ahead of the S10 Plus and the OnePlus 6T. So we go from 36 megabytes a second there down to five and four megabytes a second when you look at the other two devices. And again, a similar thing with random reads. We've got 19 megabytes a second on the P30 Pro and then 11 and 13 on the S10 Plus and the OnePlus 6T. So it turns out that the P30 Pro has actually got some new technology that allows it to do faster random reads and random writes. And it really is a kind of a league ahead of what you get in the S10 and the OnePlus 6T. When it comes to overall performance, it looks like the OnePlus 6T is kind of a general all round performer because it's better at the sequential reads and writes than the P30 Pro. And the S10 Plus is competitive. So it's not slow, you know, like, oh, compared to uh, other devices, but it's not better than them. In that one benchmark there, it was a little bit better, but in overall performance, it's kind of competitive, but it's not the fastest, most blazing uh, storage out there. But I think that means you're not gonna have any problems with it, but it's just interesting to know it's not the fastest out there. Now, one other thing worth mentioning, I also include on that table, just to show you what a typical SSD does on a, a desktop. I ran the same tool because it's a cross-platform tool on an SSD on my desktop PC. And look at the difference in the numbers here. We can see that the uh, write speed is at least double that of what you get on a mobile device. The sequential read speed is actually uh, 
you know, slower in some cases than what you get in, let's say, the P30 Pro and the OnePlus 6T, but still, you know, comparative to what you get in a mobile device. But here again, when it comes to random read and random write, again, a completely different league, 54 megabytes a second compared to 36 on the P30 Pro, and right down to four and five, so 10 times faster on a typical uh, SSD. And again, the same here with the uh, random read speed, 37 megabytes a second compared to half of that almost in the P30 Pro and a quarter of that when you get to the other devices. So that's just an interesting insight there into the difference between the storage in a in a PC and the storage in a uh, smartphone. Now of course that's an SSD when you get down to like an M2 uh, flash module those numbers are even faster and maybe that's a story for a whole uh, different video. If you'd like that video tell me about it please in the comments below. Okay, so what does all that mean? The S10 Plus with one terabyte has one terabyte of storage which you can store an awful lot of photos and music and video and Netflix downloads on it and you'll still have loads of space left over. So the question is, do you wanna pay the extra hundreds of dollars, I think it's a $600 difference between the base model and that model to get you that extra storage space? Maybe the 512 or even the 256 really would fit into your usage and still actually you'd have enough money left over to buy like a PlayStation 4 or something like that. And then there's a the question of the RAM. I still maintain that between six and eight gigabytes is the sweet spot and anything more than eight gigabytes is really not worth it. As I showed in that test, if you want to have five huge apps that use between kind of 800 megabytes and one a gigabyte of memory each in memory simultaneously then yes go for 12 gigabytes and I'm sure next year you'll want to go for 16 gigabytes and then 20 gigabytes because you know but actually most normal people when we're using our devices you know if we haven't played you know Fortnite for five days or something and then when we click on it it has to reload well that really isn't an issue so you know question is, is it worth $1,600? I asked that question. A lot of you seem to say no. A few people said yes. Of course, it's your money, so you spend it however you want. But personally, I'd get a smaller one, smaller capacity, and spend the extra money on something else. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And well, um, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.